football have to do with cows? Perhaps more than we think. Let's find out. I'm Allie with American Dairy Association, Indiana. We proudly serve the dairy farm families in Indiana, provide nutrition information and resources to our communities, and support youth wellness through Fuel Up to Play 60. Today, we'll be visiting two of Indiana's dairy farmers. Jill from Homestead Dairy is joining us from my favorite place when I visit a dairy farm, the Calf Barn. And Debbie Haynes from Superior Dairy will show us how they milk their cows with robots. We also have a special guest today, our Fuel Up to Play 60 player ambassador from the Indianapolis Colts Pro Bowl offensive guard, Quentin Nelson. Let's join Quentin and Jill in the calf barn. Hello, I'm Jill Huyen from Homestead Dairy, originally from New Jersey. I had never been on a dairy farm before and I married my husband and now I raise the calves and give all the tours at the dairy farm. So this is um, the calf barn now. So a little history of the farm. In 1945, we had nine cows, some chickens, some pigs, and 12 children in a two-bedroom house. In 2020, we're milking 4,900 cows on three different facilities with 14 family members. So we have a rather large farm, but every family member has a different um, section. And I think that's really cool because then we have our own space and our own responsibilities to um, help produce the wholesome milk that you drink. So um, here at the calf barn, these calves are actually at birth are 90 pounds. And then by the time they are milking, they're around 1,200 pounds, 1,300 pounds. So they Holy grow God. rather fast. <laughs> I know, they're huge. That's why I like the babies right now. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so we give a gallon of colostrum at birth. Do you know what colostrum is? No. Colostrum, every mammal produces colostrum and colostrum is the first milk that the mother produces and it has antibodies to help them stay safe and healthy and then um, after they have their colostrum they come to me and they get um, get to live in this group setting since day one we have auto feeders where they can eat they can go in and eat whenever they want to and you can see there's a little nipple there can you see it yeah and they this antenna reads the button in her ear and the button will keep track of how much milk those animals will have and then i have workers that come in every day and make sure that they have at least four liters four liters is making sure that they stay healthy but these calves can actually drink 24 liters in a day that's i believe six gallons of milk so that's a lot of milk that they can drink if they want to Wow. It's amazing because some are so different. Some will drink a ton and then they won't eat grain very quickly. And then some will eat grain really quick, quickly and not drink a ton. So we're able to differentiate. And my teaching background, um, I love that. We're able to change it up for those calves and have the opportunity to give them what they need as they grow. Nice. So I think that's really cool. So Quentin, how many gallons of milk did you drink growing up? Uh, yeah, my mom would have to, like, I, I have three siblings, uh, two sisters and one brother, and she'd have to buy at least two gallons of milk uh, at the beginning of the week, and, I mean, had it every morning with uh, cereal, and then also every night at dinner, we all had a glass of milk, and, like, you had to finish your milk, like, there was some times where, like, you know, it might have like tasted a little funny or like maybe like you ate your dinner first and you didn't uh, like you didn't drink your milk and it kind of got like a little warm. Like you had to finish your milk. Uh, that was really big. And uh, I partly credit that to uh, my size and uh, how strong I got. And that drinking the milk helps the calves grow too to be big and strong. So I think that's really a good connection. Kisses, I know kisses. Uh, so we have we have robots that we uh, feed the calves with, but we also have robots that milk the cows, just like Miss Deb is going to show you here shortly. And it's really cool to use the different technology because we're able to track each individual cow based upon the technology and the data. And if the calves aren't eating well, I have a veterinarian on staff 
that actually goes through every calf every day and tracks and looks at the data on my machines as well to see if there's any deviation, we're able to keep the health of the animal. And you have a trainer, we have a veterinarian. <laughs> I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> Making sure they're staying strong. <laughs> So Jill, I saw that tether ball looking thing hanging in the barn. What's that for? Yeah, what is I that? I do. I, I have. It's a, it's a toy. You got to keep them active. You got to keep <laughs> the energy levels going. Um, so they like to lick the, lick the ball and hit the ball and play the. I have to get a new one pretty much every other month because they just lick and lick and chew. But wow. the other thing we have in here is a grain. So the calves always have access to grain. And if you can see this feeder here, they have free choice grain. And I have one that keeps headbutting me. I know I'm sorry. Hi, hi, hi. Hi, hi, hi. And they have two different waters that they have access to and all of this space to just run and play. There's the one that was hitting me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Looks like they live a great lifestyle and uh, like they have all this, you guys use all this technology to keep them healthy and make sure that they're having their best life. It's really interesting. Like I had no idea that much went into it. Oh, a lot. We do um, a lot of different data analysis to make sure we do what's best for the cows as from day one, all the way into the milking herd. Um, and I had no idea. I had no, that's why I love doing tours and explaining it to people who don't understand because I wasn't born from, <laughs> from the farming world. I was born in New Jersey. So it um, really is completely different from what you expect. And learning and talking to farmers is just so important because you can see there's so many reasons why farmers do it, do what they do. And 97% of farmers or dairy farmers our family run and I think that's amazing and I got to marry into one so I think that's pretty exciting too. So Jill's right. gonna stick around a little bit so you can ask questions of Jill and Deb later but we'll head over to Deb. Uh, go for it. Well hello Quentin it's nice to meet you my name is Deb Haynes and I am one of seven owners of Superior Dairy here in Garrett, Indiana. We're um, like one-fourth of what Homestead Dairy is we only have 230 cows milking presently. Jill gets to play with the babies. I get the calm, nice, quiet girls, just the way I like them. <laughs> um, first of all, I'll tell you real quick that we have uh, used, we have a nutritionist that comes and we talk with him quite frequently, but we have a very high protein and energy total mixed ration that we feed our cows and they can eat. Do you know how much a cow can eat a day by any chance? Uh, <laughs> probably like 10 times more than me. I don't know. That. They can eat about 105 pounds of feed daily. Wow. And so we have a mixer that comes in the barn twice a day that feeds the cow. And I have a, a robot. It's called the Juno. And Juno travels up and down the barn twice a day or every hour to push that feed up to the cows. So the cows are never without any feed unless by chance they eat it all before the next time comes around. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, if you notice, this cow has a collar on. And these are the collars. Everything that we do here is off of this um, uh responder and this is connected to our computers so every cow has a responder on it and this gives me all the data i need how many pounds of milk she's mm -hmm. milking if she gets any type of um, illness if she goes off a of feed it'll tell us um, right away it's made us better managers it's helped with keeping track of their health so much more our cows here are, they get to lay on a beach every day, so they get sand bedding, and it's cleaned out. Um, about every seven days, we go through with a tool and pull the sand that's pushed up to the front, to the back, and clean out the sand. It's really soft sand. It's sand that they can't use 
um, for like building houses or anything or concrete because it's too fine of a sand, but it works great for the house. We have these huge fans and I shut them off just for the tour today because if not, we would be in a wind tunnel. But there's yeah. 36 of these that run. Once the barn reaches uh, 60 degrees, those kick on in increments and keeps the cows cool. Cows like it between 45 and 65 degrees. So this helps keep them cool and maintain that. We also have a sprinkler system mm -hmm. that will uh, flood them with water. And when it gets real hot outside, we'll turn that on. Real quick, we're gonna step inside here. The nice thing about the robots is, wow. it, you and I can milk the same, or try to milk it the same, yeah. but with the robot, it doesn't matter which robot they go in, it's the same protocol. Nice, consistency. Um, mm -hmm. Nice, very consistent. They just come in, they eat. There you saw the uh, sanitizer being put on the brushes, preparing for the next cow that comes in. That's we high have, end. Um, every cow's milk goes into what we call a whey jar. And this is what the cow, um, it weighs it at every milking so that the computer keeps track of how much that cow is producing a day. That's crazy. Yeah, it is nuts. So Deb, about how much time does the cow spend in the robot each time? The average time here at Superior Dairy is seven minutes. And what Ours as well. Time. Wow. This uh, one is getting ready to go on. How long would it take uh, before you add this machinery? It takes us about 12 minutes in our conventional parlor. Um, okay. To, from in and out. So I'm, I'm assuming that sounds about right for you yeah. as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably about right. So we've gotten a really cool opportunity to learn about all of the robotic stuff and the cow comfort and how awesome all the barns are. I wanted to kick it back to Jill while we still have a couple That's minutes cool. left out there. Um, just to talk about kind of what you guys are doing with Notre Dame University since Deb is so wonderfully sporting the shirt. Um, but since you guys are just about... Think. yeah, <laughs> Hey, we're huge are... Notre Dame fans. <laughs> Let's go higher. Love it. <laughs> You got a lot. You're in a good company here, Quentin. But um, Jill and Homestead Dairy has a really cool program with Notre Dame um, to kind of help with sustainability and food waste. So if you just want to kind of cover that real quick. We have a digester and the digester. Have you ever heard of a digester, Quentin? No, I have not. No? Yeah. Okay. So let me tell you about this digester. The digester takes manure and spins it around and collects all the methane and then it converts it to like a similar to a natural gas and mm -hmm. then we produce enough electricity for a thousand houses an hour in Plymouth in our town. So we had the opportunity to work with Notre Dame and they created a food waste system where they collected all of their food waste from the food from the dining halls. halls. Yeah, the dining halls. And it um, takes that food waste, brings it to us, and it's called a slurry. And that's put in the digester with the manure. And then it creates even more methane gas to create electricity. Wow. And this is kind of our um, layout of how a digester works. So just like Jill said, uh, the manure from the cows goes in along with a lot of the food scraps. Um, that sits in that big vat, and then it can be used for lots of different things, either to power the farm, um, we can make renewable gas out of it, and then again, to use it for fertilizer on the fields or any kind of animal bedding. Um, that's something really cool, Jill, if you guys want to talk about that at your farm. Yeah, so um, we have the opportunity to then take the manure from the digester and from the um, robots and we have a manure dryer and the manure dryer spins it and tumbles it and takes all of the liquid out and then instead of sand we use that as their bedding so then we can then scrape it back into the system and it's just a continuous cycle um, to be 
more sustainable on our end. So I don't know. I, I didn't know manure had that much use. I knew it was uh, used as fertilizer. Um, but wow, that's insane. Like you don't let anything go to waste. We don't. Oh, we we spread all of our manure out into the fields. Okay, cool. Yeah, we we do as well once it's done used as bedding. So I think it's amazing about dairy farmers, since I did not grow up in this industry, is how different you can do things as long as you're taking care of the animals the best you can, uh, taking care of the earth the best you can. There are so many different ways to milk a cow and produce nutritious milk for players like you and students around the world. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a couple minutes left here. Quentin, if you have any um, questions or just kind of talking through, like you said, um, what's really surprised you about learning about what you've learned on the farm or uh, what your favorite part's been so far, if you'd like to come back and see, I'm sure we'd get you on a farm here pretty quick. So oh, absolutely. the amount of technology that goes into a farm, like using technology to give out better milk, that really uh, been interesting and like exciting to learn about. And I appreciate you guys taking the time to do that. Um, it's, uh, I just think it's all crazy. Um, and then you don't have them on right now, but with the fans to keep them cool and then the blinds, like just to get the right temperature for them, the amount of right. care you guys should truly animals uh, and like take amazing care of them. And uh, it's well, just they take real good care of us. <laughs> Quentin, do you think there's any similarities between your work schedule and maybe a farming work schedule? I wouldn't I do to what they do. Like that's really hard hard and tough. And me, I just I'll just uh like work out in the weight room and like do some pass S and run blocking. Like it's it's not that hard comparatively to what they do. Um but schedule wise, like I don't know. I think they're a lot more busy than I am. And I <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, I wish I had some more free time, but I mean <laughs> that's so, why we yeah. utilize the technology that we have so i'm yeah. sure that you use different technology like with training and reps and different things and monitoring heartbeats um consumption yep. nutrition and everything like that that really is very similar to how we track all of the animals we have ultrasounds to analyze their lungs we have um, different things on our technology from milking to the auto feeders. It's really comes down to analyzing your health, analyzing the animal's health, and then connecting it. Yeah. But our schedules are just as long as I'm guessing yeah. as yours are too. You work hard. Give yourself credit yes. for that. Yes. Good job. We're very now, proud uh, of you from absolutely. Notre Dame going to the cults. Yep. <laughs> And I just want to say that I appreciate your guys' time today. And it was a really eye-opening experience for me to see what goes on in these dairy farms and just the great care and, like, love you have for these animals and the amount of time you spend. And I appreciate and I'm thankful for everything you guys are doing. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You.